Hi everyone, today we are going to be making a dream catcher. Um, what I've chosen for today is a lovely shiny purple yarn, a silvery toned yarn. We'll be using some white beads, uh, super tack glue. I've also got here some white and some purple colored feathers. You will need a ring of your choosing. You can get these from most craft stores. I am also going to be using a silver paint and a insane detail Warhammer brush to add some extra sparkle to our finished item. So I am going to get started and then I will show you how to make it. Okay, so first off, we are going to be wrapping the ring in our desired yarn. A lot of people say that you have to use the leather to do this. You do not have to use leather. You can make it however you like. So you tie a knot so that your yarn has an end of about two inches. One and a half is also acceptable. So you just tie a knot so it stays in place. And then you just wrap your yarn through and cover the entire ring. See, so you just hold it nice and tight. Then we grab a little tiny dab of our glue. Tiny, tiny dab. Ah, there's a little bit too much glue. That's okay. It dries clear anyway. Now wrap it through again. And cover it over. Wrap it through. And cover it over. Now because it dries clear, it really doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy. That's the best part about clear drying glue. So you just wrap your yarn nice and tightly together. And you just keep wrapping until you get all of it done all the way around back to the beginning. So once you've reached the end of your glue splodge, you will then apply a new splodge of glue. Just enough to glue down the bits that you're currently able to work on because if you move too far forward, the glue will dry before you get there and then you'll have to apply more glue. So just continue doing this all the way around. You may want to work in smaller pieces of yarn so you don't have to keep fishing it through the loop. That is completely up to you. It does not matter at all which way you decide to do it. So just fish it all the way through. Keep remembering to apply your glue when needed. And I will meet you back when I have gotten back to this end. Okay, now I have finished wrapping my yarn around the entire ring. I have left a bit of yarn at the end. You can either tie this in a knot and use this to hang it like I am going to do, or you can basically tie a new piece on. It's completely up to you. So I'm just going to tie that in a little knot at the moment so you can see how you can do it. Okay, so the next part is I'm going to grab our silver yarn, which is right here. So with our silver yarn, what we're going to do is attach it about here, where it is already got a few knots, so it's not really going to matter. 
And if we leave about two inches worth of knot, then that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to sew it in afterwards so we completely hide it. So just knot it on there is the best way to do it. And I'm actually using a much smaller ball of yarn for the silver, which is going to be much more helpful for me. So just hold your top piece out of the way if you can, or if you've cut it off, that will make it easier for you. So we're going to go from this top section to over here, leaving a gap in the middle. So we're actually going to go to about there, and then we're going to wrap our yarn through. Now, you see, the problem with wrapping it there is we have to actually wrap it twice in order to keep it where we want it. So a better way to wrap it is actually to wrap through here. Then move our loop up and then it actually has a tension piece because we're pulling it down ways it just makes it a little bit easier. So you just grab your yarn, pull it through, position your loop, and I'm going to have it about there. So I'm, I'm basically going to make what's similar to about a hexagon shape. Mm, maybe not quite a hexagon, maybe a similar shape to a hexagon. Similar but not exact. See, I want that loop a little bit further down here, which is why you don't do it too tight at the moment. So that way you can change it if it shifts or if you're not sure exactly where you want it, you haven't glued anything in place yet, which makes it a lot easier to just wriggle it back up. So I'm going to put that one about there. And then I've got space for about one more point of his own, or point of its own, sorry. And now, as you see, it's uneven. And I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to stuff like this, so I can't have it uneven to that point. So I'm actually going to move a few of my points because I can't have it uneven like that. Ah, uh, much better. Put you here. Wiggle you that way. Much better. Okay. And I'll just do the last one. All those bits out of my way. And out of that loop's way as well. Okay. Now, as you can see, my hexagon is quite nice at the moment. But I'm not going to be able to fit my ball of yarn through all of my smaller loops. So we will have to grab a, a section of yarn, go for a couple of feet. If you grab a couple of feet worth of yarn, that should be plenty. So that's why I've got between two and three foot of yarn. That should definitely be plenty. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my yarn put it in the center, pull it through. And now I've actually made it a little bit neater because I've pulled both of these two pieces together, which is much better. So now we are going to poke our yarn through the second one from where we are. There we go. We're going to poke it through this one 
which is the second one from where we are. Second one from where we are. And then the first one back through the one that we just created. through the next one and it really doesn't matter which one you go for on any of these and then I'm going to go back up through this one I'm going to go straight down to here through one of my centers and as you can see it is quite a weird looking shape but that's good you like a little bit of weirdness because then people know that you've made it yourself with love and love is always good so you just keep poking it through whichever ones you want until you have decided that you are finished making your shape. Now this looks quite star resemblance to me now. I'm happy with the star that I have created. So if you actually look at my outers, that is the star. The inners mm, don't matter as much to me. I'm looking more for the general and overall shape which is the bit that I like the most. So I'm going to untangle the giant mess that I've made at the bottom, which it doesn't look like I can. It's nicely tangled. So I am just going to tie mine off after I have finished weaving it through, of course weave it down to that point and then I'm going to tie it off whoops and nice and tight because you do not want this coming undone. So after you've tied it nice and tight, if you've got a knot like me, you can cut it off here. If you don't have a knot like me, you don't have to cut it off, but I'm just cutting it there now. And I'm just gonna do that in a secondary knot, which makes it a lot neater. And then as you can see, I have a nice star now. So I'm just going to set that there for the moment. And now what we are going to do is we are going to grab some lengths of yarn. I'm going to say... About 20 to 22 centimetres each. It doesn't have to be exact... You can just go from what you see. How about we make it like closer to 30 centimetres? That's good. 30 centimetres is good. So just about the same length is good. You don't have to make it exactly the same, but as long as they're about the same, no shorter than 20 centimetres is good. Okay, and I've got my few little pieces. So now what I'm going to do is fold them in half, as you can see. I'm going to take my catcher and I am going to attach them like so. This one is going onto the very end point 
of one of my star points. And then I'll do the same with the other two to three, depending on how many you want is how many you put on. Okay, now that you have attached some of your pieces, we can move along to attaching the feathers and the beads. So just grab some of your feathers, it doesn't matter which ones, you grab the ends of them. And you get one of your beads. Now you stick the ends of your feathers into the bead. Then you get your tack glue. Put some glue on the ends of your feathers. Around about there is good. Get a nice little blob in there. And then you move the bead back up. And we will attach it to the very end of our yarn. So if you just stick your yarn onto the glue on the ends of your feathers it should hold there nicely after a minute or so and if you're having trouble you can always get the end of one of your needles and just poke it into the top of the bead It will stick to the glue, I promise you it will stick to the glue. So there you go. I will go ahead and do the other ones and then I will meet you back here. Okay, now I have finished with my feathers and they look nice and fluffy. So final step for me is the painting, which I'm using a Ranafang steel from Citadel and I'm using the Insane Detail brush, which is a the Army Painter War, War Gamer Insane Detail brush, which you are not under any obligation to use either of these this is just something that I do I just get a little bit of paint I'm not sure if you can see that and then I just tap a little bit onto my edges to stop them from moving around and I'm using silver because it blends in nicely with the color that I am using. And it's basically at every point where the yarn touches is where you would apply this. Depending on what type of paint you get, you could also get a paint with a shimmer or glitter effect, which will give it more of a web look 
which would be adorable. So it is completely up to you as to what you want from your dream catcher. And we even paint the bottom section at the tops of our feather holding yarn. Paint all them just a little bit because it will help them all stick together so that nothing wants to try and run off later. Hopefully prevents breakages. If you have small children, it shouldn't come apart as easily. But keep in mind that feathers and beads are not recommended for children under the age of three, so please do keep that in mind. Okay, so that is my dream catcher completed. Now, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any suggestions or recommendations of items that you would like me to make, please leave a comment below. Thank you, bye.